You're watching Force 13's live streaming service. What a mess! This is Force 13 Live. Subtropical storm Andrea has formed in the Atlantic Ocean. And yet again, the season begins early. With satellite imagery of the storm now, I think this is coming from Max. There is the latest on what is now, or is going to very shortly be officially, Subtropical Storm Andrea, the first named storm of the 2019 Atlantic Hurricane season. Hello guys, who are still with me right now. Uh, someone say something. Uh, yes, so yes. this yes. was oh, really a surprise. Please. Max, please turn off your feedback. Um, Hold on a minute, there's two anyone... people talking at the same time. Hank, I'm sure you'll have a lot to say in a moment. Max, anything quickly? Uh, yeah, see if you can... My uh, imagery is on the screen. Uh, you can see that there are still sort of two circulations, but of course wow. the, north, the one to the northeast like is right the more dominant one, and the one that will soon become Andrea. Uh, it is likely to be very short-lived and not to do much, and so far Bermuda seems to be the only place that will really see anything from this storm. All right. Uh, Hank, you got anything to say? Uh, yes. First of all, please turn off your feedback because it's really annoying hearing my voice. Second of all, <laughs> this uh, they did go through, the reconnaissance aircraft did go through and they did find a closed yet somewhat elongated circulation. There's more than one vortex within the general circulation. The one that they flew through was just one of the mesovortices, but it was enough conclusive evidence to say that there was a closed low associated with the storm. Now, um, this they are not going to start issuing advisories until 6.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is in 28 minutes from now. Uh, so they'll start issuing advisories then, but for now we can just I guess observe the storm and not really all its beauty because it's not really it's it's kind of ugly looking. Um, the th what's going on right now is it looks like there's two storms, but really there's one. One of them to basically to the east. I'll my screen share is up right now if you want to go th if you if you need the uh, visual. Um, what's going on right now is that there is one there. There's Andrea to the east right here you can see this with this convective blow up right here just the north of the center but there's also this area right here this is an upper level low and this is providing some pretty significant baroclinic support towards the formation of andrea today there was a mid-level circulation earlier today that was pretty solid and it was able to get the system pretty consolidated and a sense down extended down to the surface hence why we now have a say trop subtropical cyclone now it's subtropical because it is not gaining its energy from the warm ocean surface and the oceanic heat. Instead, it is gaining its energy from the baroclinic forcing coming from this upper level low. And that basically means that it is a hybrid-ish system, meaning that it's gaining energy from both the from both the ocean as there it's not it's not taking zero energy from the ocean. Obviously, it's gotta have some. But it's not all that. It's mostly in accordance to this upper low. If this wasn't here, Andrea wouldn't either. So they, these two really can't go without each other right now. And the thing with this storm is likely going to be very short-lived. It is going to move off towards north and northeast before another upper trough kicks in. And these two lows right here kind of stack a little bit. But those two lows right there, um, w once they stack, once the jet stream dips towards the south, in fact, I could probably pull this up here on some uh, modeling and kind of give more of a visual for all of this right here. You can see, let me just switch to the 200 millibar winds right here. So here's just upper trough right here over the, let me zoom in a little bit, over, just 
to the west of Andrea. Andrea is over here. So this is the upper trough right here, kind of an upper low. It's more of a cutoff at this point. And it's going to progress towards the east, essentially stack over where Andrea is right now. But you'll see up towards the top of your screen, there's going to be a bit more of the jet stream coming into focus here. And as that dips towards the south, Andrea is going to get sheared essentially to death right here as these winds right here anything in blue right here is already a, is already 20 knots at the upper levels and that's already coming in towards the south so that's a pretty significant shear as it approaches the bermuda vicinity and once it does that then it's basically going to get killed off by any of the shear that is remaining and anything that's left of the circulation will be basically stripped of what it has and it will just be a remnant lobe at that point between now and then there is a ch there is the chance that it tries to become tropical although i see it unlikely as this upper low really isn't going anywhere and in fact it's just going to become even more of i guess a factor over the next couple of days as it tries to stack over the system but this thing will probably be gone by the time this would be able to even i guess have a chance to become subtropical or excuse me tropical because it would just get sheared already by that point uh one thing i want to ask is uh do you think that Andrea could potentially absorb absorb that other low or vice versa uh, as it becomes post-tropical. What do you mean? Absorb the upper level low? Yes. That's or not that's so that's not possible because the upper low it whenever whenever anything is higher up in the troposphere, you can't just have something absorb another thing if they're at different levels. So if you have a surface low, which is technically what Andrea is you can't really have that absorb the absor absorb the upper level low. The only thing that can really happen is that those two can stack on top of each other and essentially become kind of become kind of one coherent system. But the thing is, is that if these two stack, then Andre is just going to become su purely subtropical and won't even have any tropical characteristics to it really at all. It would just become essentially an extra tropical cyclone if that were to happen. If the shear hadn't killed it off already by that point, so that's not really a possibility. I just want to bring attention to what the National Hurricane Center's wording actually is. Um, let me see if I can get this up here. This is National Hurricane Center's website, obviously. 5.50 p.m. Eastern Time, which is just a few minutes ago. Data from Air an Air Force Reserve Reconnaissance aircraft indicate that the low-pressure system located several hundred miles southeast of Bermuda has developed a well-defined center with maximum sustained winds of about 40 miles an hour. A special advisory will be issued on subtropical storm Andrea by 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time or 10.30 p.m. UTC. That's coming right up in about 20 minutes or less. Hank, you were watching the recon for most of this afternoon. Uh, what was your analysis? Have they gone right with it based on what you were seeing? I think so. Um, the thing is, the, I mean, my attention was pretty split this afternoon considering what yeah. the hell that's going on. In, in, it still is. <laughs> well, yeah, it still is going on um, over in Texas and Oklahoma right now. But what I was of what I was observing with the reconnaissance is that they were on a general track. I was saying, okay, this is looking more and more like a subtropical system. And then they moved up into this area where they observed flight level winds of about 42 knots. And I was thinking, okay, so there's probably going to be some gales at the surface of about 35 knots. And that's what they've gone with here. So, And then they found this closed mesovortex right here within the broader circulation. That basically just kind of solidified it. And that's when they issued, or that's when they made the statement that they were going to issue advisories starting in now 22 minutes. But as we say, satellite imagery can look awful, but you can't argue with the recon. Yep. Well, yeah, essentially. So let's see, 1,006 millibars. This was, yeah, this is, okay, so yeah, this is going to be the lowest that they were able to get here. Um, so 1,006 millibars, 40 miles an hour. That is what we're going to start off this hurricane season with. A weak, short-lived subtropical storm. <laughs> and it definitely it, will be. As they always are. People are going to be uh, making comparisons with Arlene, I suppose. Eh, I, would, I see this more... Um, honestly, I see this a lot more with uh, Anna than I do Arlene at this mm. point. Um, uh, the, only well, well, the only difference is that Anna became... Uh, a tropical again as it started to approach the Carolinas, but these two systems had very similar starts as kind of 
emerging from the stalling tail end of a cold front and then progressing towards the north and both interacted with upper lows to become subtropical and then they both oh well, then on a eventually became tropical moon in the carolinas uh andrea won't do so it will just probably stay subtropical serious and question then now does it pose any risk at all to bermuda not really i mean rain and wind and maybe some rough surf that that's essentially going to be the gist of it there's nothing not going to be anything severe going on there i wouldn't imagine uh heavy rainfall yes certainly um winds possibly gusting up the gale force that's another risk rough seas that's always a risk with these types of things i don't really think it's going to get much worse than that though it's just kind of a kind of a crappy day honestly <laughs> all right in no uncertain terms there um or just blatant blatant layman's terms <laughs> anyone else like to speak uh, there's two other people here i'm not sure whether they are on board with us or not i don't know sam sorry yes um from what I'm seeing, the path looks like that path, that storm might be taking a bit of a path towards the west, towards south, or towards Georgia and Florida. But it looks like it's going to weaken before before it does. So I don't. None know of the models take this anywhere close to close to the United States. So that's not really a concern right now. Um, really, it's just just Bermuda. Like this thing is going to turn north and then probably t move slowly north and then probably turn abruptly east as it gets inter as it begins interaction with the frontal boundary and the incoming um oh what do you call it uh the jet stream i could probably let me see if i can pull up some model or at least some just spaghetti plots right here uh i don't know if it's able to be updated yet um this is still okay this is what I got. This is still when it was an invest, though, so it's still down for invest 90L for this one. Uh, so cool. this is basically the track. Ignore this one right here. Um, basically showing it move north and then curve abruptly east, but by 48 hours, it'll probably be dead already. Bermuda is right where my cursor is right here, so it will curve, south, curve to the south of Bermuda, but that will mean that Bermuda will probably be on the dirtier side of the storm, so that may mean that there may be enhanced rainfall and probably some stronger winds and higher and rougher surf around that journal area. But honestly, it wouldn't be anything more than that for them. Yes, so uh, I think we're just about getting over the shock that subtropical storm Andrea has actually formed um, yeah. today. And we'll be waiting for the news from the National Hurricane Center whenever they put out their advisory, which should be very soon, in about 15 minutes or less. You'll hear it here first. Um, in the meantime, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, uh, prepared for totally different things this evening, so... Uh, I don't have much to show at this end, so Hank's trying to bail me out with all the satellite imagery that I can't show at the minute. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to think. It's tough. I can't really go through models because they all show the exact same thing, and some of them and some of the models are still kind of outdated because they still have it designated as an invest and not as an actual you know cyclone. So it's going to be tough to get like full on imagery <laughs> that and all the there's nothing there's no mesoscale floater over it because. They're all centered over, well, this. Yes. So um, it's kind of tough, and I can't really get a good floater over it. So uh, this is basically all I have right here, and even then the sun's starting to go down, so it's becoming more and more relevant over time, I guess. Yeah, just a little bit. Seeing if I can get this imagery up right here. Well, okay, if anyone's got any questions, anything at all, send them in, and we'll answer them, because I think people are going to have all kinds of questions over this. First of all, one that's right there, Hank, are we still in an El Nino? <laughs> okay, actually, yeah, that's actually probably a good thing to ta start talking about. Um, it's in a very gray area right now, so the Enzo is definitely starting to weaken right now. I'm just going to pull this up and just kind of sh show you. It's still in an El Nino state. 
I have been seeing like a bunch of people saying that we're out of El Nino now and that it's nothing to worry about. It is because we're still technically in the El Nino pattern. Um, uh, it's amazing that my screen never shows up. Um, and so basically what's going on is that there's been there's been some westerly wind bursts that have been going on over towards the maritime continent, which is like Indonesia, oh, there, there we go, over towards Indonesia and the Western Pacific. And those have been causing these uh, anomalies over here to strengthen. The thing is, though, is that they weaken significantly as they get towards the Central Pacific, and they're not able to regain any strength as they approach the Eastern Pacific. So you can see right here, yes, there's a little bit of a tongue of above normal anomalies, but you can see there's a bit of a split right here. And even the subsurface anomalies right now are trending much, much cooler than they were even a month ago. Um, I wouldn't, I don't have the graphic pulled up right now. Um, I could probably just find it really quick. Uh, I don't forget the exact, it's from NASA, but um just like to point out, in the severe weather world, a, trop uh, a tornado watch has been issued for parts of Kansas and Missouri now until 1 a.m. Central Daylight Time. All right. Uh, so I this is. I also this like to the... point out. Sorry, I don't want to. I hate to jump in, but on the severe weather side, we also have a PDS tornado warning for in Oklahoma. Really? Mm. Yes. I'm sure the U.S. team is all over that right now. Yep. So this is what I was referring to earlier. Um, this is the subsurface anomalies right here. And this is kind of an animation of what's going on over the past uh, two months, essentially. And you can see that there's this big warm pool here that really starts to fade out. As you get into April and into May, there's a big cool anomaly here that starts to come up underneath this Kelvin wave right here that's rapidly weakening. So this means that there's going to be an extension of cooler water that tries to take over right here. Now, what this may this could mean a couple of things. First of all, it may mean it may mean that the Atlantic is going to be more busier than we initially thought. That's possible. The other possibility, though, is that it could be a short-term trend, and that anything that may be try to stay above it will remain here, and that may lead to a Madoki El Nino. That is a pretty rare event, and that would also mean that the Atlantic would be relatively above average. And examples of a Madoki El Nino include 2004, and that was a pretty, pretty busy year. The other thing, though, is that if that the Madoki does form, that means that the that the Pacific will still remain relatively active. Now, maybe not as active as it was last year in the Eastern Pacific, especially, but in the Western Pacific, we may see a year somewhat similar to what we saw last year, maybe with less cat fives though and maybe a little bit less um accumulate cyclone energy but still potentially a pretty similar year um as for the atlantic setup right now it's been it's a bit um iffy right now there's nothing screaming below normal there's nothing screaming above normal right now so and because right now because the um the uh, mid subtropical anomalies right here have really started to fade off in fact if i could go back um Actually, let me do this really quick. I'm going to um, open that image in a new tab and just show you what it was like a month ago. Um, you can see here that once this image comes up, um, that, again, if this image would come up, my magic words will tell it to come up or not. <laughs> so oh dear. this, it, <laughs> it's frustrating how slow my internet is. Anyways. So this is what the Atlantic looks like right now. You can see the main development region slightly above average right now. And then the Caribbean, it's about average, maybe slightly below. Gulf of Mexico, I don't really know, really care too much about because it's going to be warm for major hurricanes regardless. Now, the Western Atlantic is pretty above normal now. Now, you can see that there's some splotches here where it is a little cooler than normal, particularly extending from the Caribbean up to the Central Atlantic and up into the polar regions. You can see the Gulf Stream here very warm but north of it it's very cool compared to normal and up here towards the canaries and east of um or west of the iberian peninsula it's still pretty warm this is what it looked like a month ago you can see that up here there's more widespread warm anomalies in the north atlantic up here and the mdr is slightly slightly cooler it's a bit it's a bit tough to notice here but you can also see here in the pacific note how the enzo cools off 
quite a lot as we, this is now this was in April you can kind of see the difference here as May is uh, noticeably cooler even a cool anomaly is showing up you're essentially south of the long, uh, basically at the longitude of the Baja California Peninsula and then during that time in April it was one of the warmest spots of the Enzo region and you can also note that the, there's been some significant warming near and east of Hawaii as well uh, in association with the attempting to develop a PDO signature, which is struggling to do so because of this cool anomaly east of California. What all this means basically is that activity in the Atlantic may be a bit more abundant than we initially thought. Now, the formation of Andrea really doesn't mean much at all considering the system is subtropical in nature and will be short-lived anyways. So if now if Andrea formed from a tropical wave moving through the main development region then we may have a different we may be having a different conversation but because it's not that way it's like what we usually see with may systems it's going to be really a non-factor if we're going to be looking into the future for the atlantic now if we do see systems forming from tropical waves in the main development region during the next two months maybe we'll be seeing maybe we could see an anomalously stronger um season than we initially expected but it's that's going to have to wait to see until we get further into the season and then that will kind of determine more and more of what we can expect for maybe impacts in the Caribbean in the United States, Mexico. And once we get past then, we will have a better understanding of all of that. As for the Pacific, it's, it's the forecast essentially is, is staying the same. Even with this cooling of the Enzo, we have a warming um, in the central and eastern Pacific anyways. So that's going to indicate that there's still going to be some activity out here, in addition to the development that's trying to occur south of Mexico, but it's just failing to do so. That could also have some minor implications on that as well. Let's see if the National Hurricane Center is mm, updated. Yeah, uh, no. Nope. Not yet. Okay. So just wanting to point out a particularly dangerous situation, tornado warning in effect in southwestern Oklahoma right now. Damaging tornado on the ground. Golf ball sized hail is possible. Our US team will be covering that on their stream at this time. Uh, we are keeping up with subtropical storm Andrea which is likely to get its first proper update from the National Hurricane Center at any moment. We're just waiting uh, here just as you are if there's any more questions we could take before that happens then uh, maybe it will uh, allow that weight to be decreased um, but there we are uh, I'm I'm actually I'm actually still I'm actually still here because uh, the US room is full and uh, I'm not and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be if I I've been I've already requested to rotate in so I can provide some extra coverage over there, but um, it's not looking to be successful at the moment. It looks like uh, the U.S. team out there has got their hands full. Uh, we do have storms over there are really firing up. Um, mm. We've already got a PDS tornado warning going on. I think they've had one or two difficulties in the first uh, hour of their stream there, but they are live yeah. if you take a look at their channel. Um, I don't know what's been going on over there. Hopefully the situation... Uh, hopefully we didn't miss too much with that little outage there. There's so much going on, we're trying to coordinate everything here. Um, but we're looking again at that recon there, and now the National Hurricane Center waiting for that update, which should arrive at any time. Uh, we could talk about anything whilst we're waiting. Let's see if there's qu any questions here that I can there answer. There's a question right at the bottom there. When do we do our updated tropical season forecasts? Well, um, our April forecast is really the only one that we actually do. So I don't anticipate there'll be another forecast coming up. We just go, well, half the time we're too busy actually living the season to do another forecast, but... Um, I don't know if any of us want to talk a little bit about that, but of course we will be having a start of Atlantic Hurricane season party, even though the storms have spoiled it for the fifth year in a row. In fact, I don't think we've, in, in Force 13's live streaming years, 
This is the fifth year of Force 13 live streaming. We have never done a countdown to the Atlantic Hurricane season before the first storm has formed. That is dreadful. But not our fault. Are. No, indeed not. But this will become official very shortly. I mean, I don't know if it's technically still unofficial until they actually issue that advisory, but they admitted themselves since 550 EDT that it is going to be named Subtropical Storm Andrea. I mean, yeah, you can't really go back on that. No, no. So... Yeah, I, I mean, I guess another interesting tidbit is that this is... I mean, we've said this before, the fifth year in a row that there's been a preseason storm, but it's also in the fifth year, the first storm of the season started out subtropical. That's definitely a record. I don't know since when or how much, but it's a record. That's def I don't see any way how that's not a record. Yeah, certainly, that we know of, for sure. We're just watching numerous situations in Oklahoma. There is one PDS tornado that is occurring in southwestern Oklahoma, keeping one eye on that and one on the formation of Andrea, which will be kitted out with its full uh, National Hurricane Center array of products when they issue that advisory, which should be any time now. I think they're going to run like clockwork, Hank. I think they'll do it right on the dot. Sometimes they do it before. Sometimes they just do it like right on the dot. I have no. They they never have a pattern. So you'll see there the uh, system is to the southwest of Bermuda, not a huge distance away. Um, what, oh, what struck me earlier today when we were talking about it, Hank, is that you know it's it's it would appear to be quite a broad system, and I mean I don't know. You look at that imagery there. What is going on there in the southwest? So that is an upper level low that is separate to Andrea, but it is the it, it is the main reason why Andrea is able to basically sustain itself right now and have this centralized sustained convection. That is because that this is pro providing some baroclinic forcing, which basically means that any th that it is providing more instability and because there is cooler air up aloft for the storm to take advantage of. And as a result, the system has been able to intensify and organize a bit more and has now become a subtropical cyclone. Without this, Andrea would basically be dead and there would be nothing to speak of. Um, it is pretty broad. Subtropical systems usually are pretty broad. Um, I feel like the 40 not, uh, 45, no, what am I saying? The 35, not wind field thing, whatever, is going to be pretty, pretty broad once... This advisory comes out, and we'll get to that probably any minute now, um, any second probably. Um, <laughs> so, th so yeah, that's basically what's going on with the system. And as these two begin to interact a bit more, there may be a, a little bit of an opportunity for this to stack on top of Andrea, and that might cause one of two things. It might intensify it because it will enhance the bear clinic forcing, or it might weaken it because it will just increase the shearing over it as well. And yeah, that's we've the thing got the, the advisory system. now, Hank. All right, all, all right. I'll... Uh, there is a question that just came in. Uh, it said, "I've heard that this year Africa might be wetter than normal. So does that mean more tropical?" Hold on, stop. Hold on a minute. Just, just. Hold on with that question. Uh, the National Hurricane Center expects a peak of 45 miles per hour um, and then weakening to below tro uh, subtropical storm intensity by 6 a.m. on the 22nd. That's Wednesday and dissipating later on on Wednesday. So a very short-lived system there. Um, and I don't see anything specifically saying that it turns tropical, so it must stay subtropical the whole time. Sounds about right. Max, try again. Yeah, there was a question that asked, it said, I've heard that this year Africa might 
to be wetter than normal, so does that mean more tropical mm. waves? Uh, yeah, de generally, yes. So that means that the African monsoon is stronger, and once that happens, then there's more available uh, precipitable water anomalies and higher vorticity over uh, Western Africa, and that is basically fuel for tropical waves to fuel off of. Now, that means they may be more vigorous as they come off the African coast, but the question is that they will be able will they able to be sustained once they continue farther towards the west, and that really depends on the state of the Saharan air layer, which we won't really have a, a good idea of until really in about a month once the season starts to get going and we start to see more and more of these things unfold. Um, right now, it's looking like there may be a bit more of, like a bit higher concentration of Saharan dust than normal across the main development region, just because when you have such high um, convection over Western Africa, that means you have more outflow, and that outflow is going to be pumped into the African easterly jet, which is going to basically expel more and more of that dust out towards the west and over the Atlantic Ocean. So if you have that convective outflow, that just speeds up the process, really, and causes more of that dust to get picked up and then basically just go across the Atlantic and the main development region. Sometimes that can extend all the way into the Caribbean Sea and even Gulf of Mexico. So it can extend quite a ways, and if the storm is able to form far enough south, like along the intertropical convergence zone, which will probably be also pretty ripe this year just considering the anomalies we're going to see over western africa then that means that tropical waves will have a better opportunity to form down there as as long as there is also some at least some convectively coupled kelvin waves also moving through and that's more complicated i don't want to get into that <laughs> but that's that's the sense so the gist of it is more just more uh precipitation over western africa generally means stronger tropical waves but that doesn't necessarily mean more um, Atlantic activity just because the waves may be killed off by that Saharan air layer that I mentioned earlier. We're looking at some satellite imagery that I've managed to get through now. Uh, the graphics are still being generated from the National Hurricane Center. Um, I'm not sure if you're getting anything there yet, Hank. I am not the icon. Actually, I am. So I have the forecast cone up on my screen share right now. Yep. Um, this is the National Hurricane Center forecast track of Andrea. You can see well away from the United States and curves essentially right with the models to the north and then straight east and then becomes a depression by tomorrow night, dissipates to the essentially to the south of Bermuda and peaks as, I think they said, a 45 mile an hour tropical storm. So, and that would be probably overnight or during the morning tomorrow. And after that, it'll essentially be history. So, short lived, weak, not really much else to say about that. <laughs> yeah, looking interesting though, and it's another pre season storm. Blimey. Let's see. Yeah, no discussion has been issued yet. Those are usually what I look for, but not yet. All right. Uh, I don't know what you guys want to do now. Shall we do some simulcasting with Force 13 US and see what the latest is there for a few minutes? Yes. Sure. I think that'd be a good idea since the room is full for me. All right. I'm going to get this thing. It's going to take me a little minute to get things sorted here to get to conf it's such a hassle doing all this stuff uh, but it is worth it and it will be very much uh, useful during the height of hurricane season when exactly. we do hope to have multiple uh, streams running for particular events uh, okay I believe we're now ready to cross over to Force 13 US <laughs> with the latest going on over there This is a dangerous tornado. This is probably on the ground uh, and definitely something that I would suggest uh, taking cover from. Uh, we do have a new tornado warning that's just gone into effect. This is regarding uh, the tornadic supercell that has been moving into uh, Oklahoma. This is actually um, getting very close 
to Tulsa at the moment. Uh, so this new tornado warning, this is an extension of a previous one. This is for a radar-indicated tornado. This is for South Central Osage County and Pawnee County in Oklahoma right now. So that's what we're seeing. This is along a line of thunderstorms. This is not a individual discrete supercell, I think, that has prompted the warning, uh, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, no, it is embedded along this line if it is a tornado, and it does look quite strong on a couplet, so I would not be surprised if that is a uh, that is a tornado on the ground with that. That is a very strong couplet, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. Uh, back to the particularly dangerous situation here that we no do have. No longer that. It's now radar indicated. Ah, uh, yeah, it is. I just saw that. So this is no longer a particularly dangerous situation, but I'm going to take a look at velocity. See what we see. Still strong velocity. My velocity is glitching Still very out quite a strong bit. velocity. Still an extremely strong hook echo. Um, this does not look like it's weakened at all, so I don't know why they would downgrade it to a, from a PDS when the, the structure of the storm has not changed one single bit. That's, that's a really curious move because... Uh, I, I, I mean, obviously the spotters must have seen the tornado go back up, but I can't imagine that tornado is going to stay back up for too long because, man, this thing is, is an extremely mature storm, and I don't really see it dying anytime soon. I do not either. So here are the following locations. Uh, if we do track this out on my radar, we'll be impacted at the following times. Uh, it looks as if uh, right now... Uh, Sentinel at 6.09, Rocky at 6.18, at 6.21, Dill City, and at 6.32, Cordell. These are all in Central Daylight Time. We have had a request now to go up and check on the storm uh, that is up in Joplin. So uh, we will check that storm now yep. uh, and see how that one's doing uh, since we have gotten I'm the getting request over to. there. All right, so there we go. It does look like it does have a fair hook actually on it. Uh, that's not uh, looking. Yeah, there's, that's there's not looking. It's not looking too bad. Uh, velocity looks like garbage though. Yeah, the luckily, and this is obviously a good thing. The uh, velocities do not make it look like that there is a very strong rotation with the storm, but uh, definitely a good idea to throw the warning out because the re reflectivity definitely makes it look like that. Uh, tornado could possibly be on the ground there. I'm looking at a, a live stream now near Magnum and I'm seeing some tornado damage uh, over the city. I, I don't know the full extent of it, but I'm seeing some down trees, power lines, and pieces of roof, roof being uh, scattered about. Alright, well, down trees, power lines, some roofing. I mean, that would be at least EF1 there. Yeah, we do uh, have a new severe thunderstorm warning, actually, regarding this cell now, so let's go over that. That's for northeastern Newton County, northwestern Lawrence County. This is the cell that we just went over in Joplin, not the uh, right. not the one in Oklahoma. Northwestern Lawrence County, eastern Jasper County, and southwestern Dade County uh, in southwestern Missouri. This is until 6.15 p.m. Central Daylight Time, 60 mile per hour winds, and quarter-sized hail. So that's what we are currently looking at right now. Uh, to the Force 13 US team, what's your overall thoughts on the current situation? Uh, I know that things are getting quite dangerous quite quickly, uh, but do we think that we're going to continue to see this throughout the evening? Uh, yeah, probably. I think that's only going to get worse from here. I would have to agree with you. I think things are going to get a lot worse here, especially over the next couple of hours. Uh, the high risk is still remaining, uh, and that's definitely not a good situation. I am seeing some stuff regarding tropics in our chat. If you do want to chat about the tropics, please go to the Force 13 main channel. They're currently holding a live stream on the main channel regarding the uh, tropics. 
So that's just youtube.com forward slash force13, and you can go right there. You'll just click on the first video. You see that's a live video. Confirm yes. tornado to the southeast of Odessa in Texas. Confirm tornado. Right, that is now yeah. confirmed. I also want to mention uh, that that's the third one in there, Granite. Um, I'm looking at the live feed right now, and there is a lower room. I'm not seeing any signs of a tornado on the ground, but I am seeing signs of a lower room. So what I am seeing is well, uh, I do want to talk about. We did just get a brand new tornado warning that came out. And this is radar indicated. This is for southeastern Collingsworth County in the Panhandle of Texas until 6:15 p.m. Central Daylight Time. This is a tornado and quarter-sized hail uh, that are the hazards with this. This could get confirmed at any time, and we just got yet another tornado warning. We're getting numerous of them now. Uh, this tornado warning is in effect for the following counties, West Central Osage County and Northwestern Pawnee County in Northeastern Oklahoma. This is until 6.15 p.m. This is a radar-indicated tornado at this time. Man, are you sure that there's nothing on the ground with this? This is... Yeah, it, it does look really good. Where are you guys looking yeah. at again? We are looking, looking at, at the, the cell that is currently going across Greer County, Oklahoma. Um, that is located uh, not too far away from Grant. Yeah, that's that looks pretty strong. That, that's I would definitely say. That's yeah. def that's yeah. that's definitely. Uh, that's Speaking definitely of which, the strongest they've just made it confirmed right again. They have said it is a confirmed tornado now uh, on an tornado. update to the warning. Okay, so tornado once again on the ground in southwestern Oklahoma. This will be the second tornado that this storm has produced. Uh, so once again, tornado is confirmed to be on the ground in central Greer County. And that will be moving to the northeast towards the town of Granite. And will end up going into northwestern Kiowa County. And that will be passing near the community of Lone Wolf. Uh, likely to the north and west of Lone Wolf. But they should definitely still be uh, at attention for this storm. And then it will eventually move into Washita County southwestern Washita County, where it will pass very close to or over either Sentinel or Rocky. So nice if you are in any of those communities, it is imperative you uh, either pay close attention or seek shelter immediately, depending on how close this thing is. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the stream right now near Granite. Uh, it's hard, I can't tell how exactly big it is, but if I'm looking at it right, we might have a really large wet tornado on the ground again, Nick Granite. Yeah, boy, you just said that there was a large lowering on the ground, so... Well, I couldn't see it because there's, there's a hill in the, the way of the yeah. park, but it looks... It's, it might be it, a large wet. Whenever, whenever there's uh, one of those uh, really large shelf clouds, it's always really difficult to tell uh, just how big of a tornado is actually down on the ground or not. Uh, and especially if it's an extremely large wedge tornado, um, you know, it's really hard to see if the tornado is even on the ground at all. Uh, I will say, at least looking at radar, this seems to have been one continuous tornado. I can't, I can't see how that could have gone up and then come back down, but Hey, I haven't tracked severe weather since 2013, so what do I know? Uh, but confirmed tornado definitely on the ground uh, near Granite, near or over Granite at this point, and uh, continues to move rapidly to the northeast at 35 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Another thing of note is that I'm also yep. looking at a camera near Stillwater, and I'm seeing some rotation there, so a possible kind of development going on there, but go ahead, guys. So yeah, it does look like... Oh, go on. Um, I was going to say that it uh, definitely looks like pretty strong. It looks pretty strong. So, Rotation. Yeah, I definitely say that there's a strong, a large, and potentially uh, damaging tornado on the ground. Uh, yeah, the, I, I'll tell you this right now, that the, uh, at least on the radar, the... Uh, 
relative velocities as of two minutes ago from what I have here. And I'm surprised it updated that fast, but from two minutes ago, I can tell you what, the, the strongest coupling is pretty much right over uh, Granite, Oklahoma. Wow. I'm getting gate to gate shear on this thing of about 50, 60 knots. This is Force 13 simulcasting, Force 13 US's live coverage, which is currently going on on the channel. It's search Force 13 US, youtube.com forward slash Force 13 US, all in text. You'll find their live stream, which is ongoing, covering the major severe weather event that's going on in the parts of the United States, Texas, and Oklahoma, chiefly at the minute, but it is extending into other states at this time. The main news, if you've just missed it, is that subtropical storm Andrea has formed. My name's Nathan Foy, and joining me for the next 15 minutes is uh, Ethan and Sam. Good evening to you both. Um, any thoughts okay. on what you've just witnessed in the last hour with the formation of this incredible but weak storm? Well, um, it is... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, um... Yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised that formed... Uh, that uh, kind, of, kind of formed like this. Um, I, I don't think it's going to last very long, but definitely is enough that it made itself known. Yep, the fifth year, if I'm not mistaken, on consecutively that a subtropical storm or tropical storm has formed began before the season even began officially, if I'm not mistaken. Now, Ethan, yeah. you must be very disappointed that the South Pacific for ages this year can't produce its next storm, yet the Atlantic does it just like that. Oh, I'm extremely disappointed at that. Indeed. Well, uh, Recon made it possible. Andrea is the first named Storm the Atlantic Hurricane season this year in 2019. Do you think they would have been able to name this without Recon? Well, I mean, it's hard to say because probably not because Recon had to go in there and find a center. But just looking at satellite imagery, you could might be able to tell that there's a center there. Uh, we've just had a question. When will Barry form? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, slow down. We've just had the formation of Andrea before the start of the hurricane season, which is June the 1st. Um, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, this system is out at sea. Uh, Bermuda is to the northeast. Uh, I'm not so sure that, it, that Bermuda will get away scot-free from this either. Um, there is significant amounts of rainfall there, convection near the centre. Um, yes, it will weaken before it gets to Bermuda, but um, I think there could be some inclement weather there on Wednesday. Are there any watches and warnings in effect for Bermuda? No, but they do say it's the usual uh, National Hurricane Centre speak. Uh, just before they issue warnings, or sometimes days before, they should watch the progress of the storm. Uh, that is sound advice. If you've got any questions for us in this period, please send us a message. We're not here all night, we're only here for another 10 minutes, and then, in an hour's time, we will be doing a tropical weather bulletin on the main channel as normal. In the meantime, the US team will be covering the latest in severe weather, which is a massive outbreak that's going on there at the moment. Um, but this has really sprung up a surprise. We're really expecting this to become, if it was to become anything, probably overnight or tomorrow, right? Well, Would I mean, there was it? a slight chance that it could have became something tonight, which, all, well, as we all know, has actually happened. <laughs> but I... I was absolutely thinking that it's going to be a subtropical depression. It was going to be weak. And that it was going to form overnight in the overnight on the U.S. East Coast. It surprised me that it formed this early. It extremely surprised me that it did that. Yes. Uh, National Hurricane Center think it will strengthen a little bit as well to 45 miles an hour. And uh, I certainly think that is possible. 
How how um how strong did Arlene get to in the end? Fifty. I think we our analysis went with forty five, but there's another one there. Um, but there we are. In all of our years, five for five years of live streaming now on Force Thirteen, um, we've never had a normal start to the hurricane season. We've never been mm, able to celebrate never. the start of hurricane season normally because we've always had a storm come early to the party. But thankfully, this one shouldn't be affecting land. If it does, it will be affecting Bermuda and nowhere else. Um, but even that is not set in stone. At the minute, it depends on how well it keeps itself together. Um, and it's so easy for these things to just completely disintegrate without any particular um, force. Let's see if we can get some wind shear graphics over this. Well, there we are. Uh, low wind shear to itself. A little gap there. But at the moment, it is in a channel of high wind shear. 25 knots plus. So uh, I find that interesting as well whether it will survive very long like that. And if it curves towards the east, well, wind shear is only rising, going in that direction towards 30 knots. Nathan, I guess I can ask you this question. Do you think that Andrea will follow the National Hurricane Center's forecast and strengthen the 45 miles an hour? Yes, I do. I think it's a very fair forecast and one that has a great chance of being correct. I think we all know it's going to be short-lived. And then it'll go around and do three loops around the Atlantic and end up in Spain. That's how it ended up last year. <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, at this time of year, they usually are very short-lived. They, they can sometimes live a little bit longer if they start off in the Western Caribbean or in the Gulf, um, but it always ends up in the same way. But out over the open Atlantic, you know, you can get systems like this. They don't use the last very long at all. Two or three days, really, isn't it? Good point. So uh, we, we really are a, uh, a bad influence or a bad luck charm on, on, on the hurricane season because they always start so early. Some people picking up on that point there. Um, all right. Not so much in the East Pack, though. No, uh, well, we, we could have had Alvin recently, but uh, 91E has let you down a little bit, hasn't it? Not really. I, uh, whenever I saw the forecast and everything, I was quite shocked that models didn't initially develop it because conditions weren't generally weren't that favorable for development. So it does not surprise me that 91E did not form. All right. I wonder if we can, uh, can we do that here? Nope, don't think we can. I'm just working with the Sims graphics at the moment. This shows Ascat Pass, I'm not sure when that was from, whether that is actually relevant. That is actually quite recent. Um, oh no, no it isn't. Don't mind me. That might be recent. Never mind that. Um, the, but of course the uh, recon did find... What was the winds that they did find in the storm? Flight 40. level they found higher winds, didn't 50, they? Yeah, 50, yeah. Um, but certainly a lot of people will be uh, very surprised to see the formation of Subtropical Storm Andrea. Another early season storm in the Atlantic. Not expected to affect any land areas. I don't know if anyone's got any imagery of what's going on in the South Atlantic. With Jaguar? If you, if you believe the Brazilians, there's a subtropical storm in the South Atlantic right now. It looks absolutely appalling. Worse than Colin. Um, and I, I don't know why they have decided to name it, but they have down there. I can't show it on my screen right now. I would have to rely on one of my guests if they could bring something up. Um, and apart from that, we have Invest 95P, which isn't really doing very much near Fiji either. I think why the Brazilian named Jaguar down in the South Atlantic was because of that little flare of convection 
that might have had tropical storm force sustained winds in it, but the center looks oh. elongated terribly. We do have an image. Uh, that there is the South Atlantic system near the right hand side edge of the globe almost there. Of course off the coast of Brazil. Um, could you really describe that as any type of cyclone, subtropical or tropical? Hard to tell of just one image there, but I've been watching it all day and it really hasn't looked any better than that. It has looked terrible. But there we are. It could be. It couldn't be. Yes, well, I really... <laughs> we'll do a poll on it tonight on the Force 13 community app. There we go. Let's see what all of the viewers think afterwards. Well, I really think that covers everything here at Force 13 HQ tonight. We will, of course, be running a tropical weather bulletin um, normal, uh, like we have been doing in the last uh, five days. Um, tropical weather bulletin coming up in just over an hour's time. Ethan and Sam, is there anything you'd like to say in the last five minutes here to conclude? Well, um, I think that yet again we have another interesting, very interesting start to the hurricane season, and especially given that we've also have a sub, we also have a. I don't even know if you can even call it subtropical <laughs> or even extra tropical down there at this no point, kidding. but it's it's literally a front. That that yeah, jaguar is literally a front. And hopefully most well, people will agree with me on like Colin. <laughs> I know that earlier we were doing severe weather coverage on the main channel, so if you're looking for that, head over to the US channel for that. That's right. But that's where, well, that's where we are right now. Uh, what else is there to say? Cubed music. 95p looks miserable. miserable. <laughs> this was Force 13 Live. Uh, we are thankful that you've been part of our live stream this evening in some cases under not so great circumstances with that developing severe weather situation the US live stream is continuing uh, and will continue for many more hours I strongly recommend if you have any interest in that at all to hop over to Force 13 US and their live stream which is underway on that channel uh, it's underneath the video description, it's in the description of this video as you're watching live. But you can also find the US channel via our main channel page, which will also host maybe one or two polls a little bit later on as we try and ascertain your opinions on uh, that. I'm not going to name that thing down there, it doesn't deserve one. And no. Andrea. Well, Tropical Weather Bulletin no. coming up in an hour's time. Thanks for watching. Good night, and thanks to the team for all of their hard work too.